evening everyone. Uh, my name is Frida Wangeshi Mongi. I'm a member of Easter Sebri. I'm a minister of the Word of God. I'm also a staff member at KEG Buruburu, uh, known, also known as KEG, uh, Easter Sebri. Uh, this evening I'm privileged to share the Word of God, just to encourage each other, especially during this time when we cannot meet together as a church because of what is going on all over the world. Uh, I'm going to share a word that uh, I would say it's personal to me because it's a word that God gave me uh, when I was anxious because of the things that were happening, because of the, uh, of the pandemic that is, undergoing, that is happening in the world. Uh, on the evening of 24th April 2020, I was just doing my usual Bible study and I, was, I just finished the book of 1 Corinthians and so I was starting 2 Corinthians and as I, as I read this word, the very first word from verse 1 to about 10, this word just jumped to me, the God of all comfort. Actually, if you read using the NIV version, there is the title, you know, it gives title to some uh, chapters. So the, it's the God of all comfort. And so that's the title of my message. And I want to read this, uh, these words even as we begin. It says, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 from verse 1 to about 9. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God in Corinth, together with all the saints through Achaia. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the suffering of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. If you are distressed, it's for your comfort and salvation. If you are comforted, it's for your comfort, which produces in you patience and endurance of the same suffering we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our suffering, so also you share in our comfort. We don't want you to be uninformed brothers about the hardship we suffered in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, in our hearts we felt the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not die in ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. That is the word of God. So Paul is saying, uh, he's writing to the brethren in the church of Corinth. But he's also opening this letter to be read by other churches. Because he says, together with all the saints throughout Achaia, and Achaia was a whole province in the Roman Empire. Uh, it is uh, the whole of Greece. It's what maybe we would call Greece. Is what was called Achaia. Uh, and so this letter is not only, it's not very, it's not personal for the church in Corinth, but also to all the saints throughout Achaia, whoever they were spread out. And uh, this was a, this is a very relevant letter for us because as I was looking through this word, one of the Bible dictionaries, actually Smith's dictionary calls, said, interpreted the word Achaia as trouble. So these people are living in Corinth, and he says, all the saints draw out a troubled place. And at this time, the world is a troubled place because of the, especially the pandemic, which of course has brought some ripple effects because there is a pandemic, there is a loss of jobs, there is a, of course the economy is failing, there is, people are hungry, and so many other things, there is a ripple effect. So the whole world is troubled at this time. So this is a very relevant world. And I, like I said, I suffered panic attack. And as I was this, Paul say, I read this word, which says, Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble. So Paul is describing Jesus Christ, and he's studying the church of Corinth. We have one who is the father of compassion and the father of all comfort. And what does comfort mean? Comfort means uh, consolation. It also means encouragement. It also means bravery. So, and see, compassion, uh, that is comfort. Compassion means sympathy, pity, and mercy. And those are very relevant words, especially today. We have people that are in need of pity. They need to be pitied. Because they are in very dire situations. We need mercy, you know, because of the things that are happening. We need consolation. We need encouragement. We need bravery. 
especially to go through this situation. Because the situations in some of our lives are so hard. People that have lost their jobs, some have lost their jobs, and it, that means their houses have been crossed by the hard roads. And because of that, it means their families are sleeping out. The other day I met with a lady, with her four children, along the road, and she was telling me, just, I'm doing a fundraiser. If you have anything, just give me whatever you have. I'm doing a fundraiser so that I can pay my rent and go back because it's so cold. And especially during these months of June and July, it's going to be very cold in our nation. And people are out in the cold because they don't have a place, a roof over their head. And so they need encouragement. They need consolation. They need mercy. We need to be merciful to them. We need to be compassionate. And so Paul is the one who said that God... The God we believe in, the, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, is the Father of all compassion and comfort. And in this time, this is what we need, to, each one of us. We need that comfort. And Paul does not stop there. He says, then why do we need comfort? We need comfort because uh, we need to comfort others. He says it very well. Uh, that we are comforted so that we may comfort others. So for me, I was comforted. And, I, when, and why I'm shared in this is because I was comforted so that I may also comfort others. And so I want to encourage you, brethren, that in whatever situation you are, you can be comforted because we have the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of all compassion and the God of all comfort. So we need to comfort each other, even as you are comforted. We have people that have lost their loved one, especially during this time, and it is so hard that they don't have a shoulder to cry on. We cannot be able to console them. We are even limited. The number of people who can go, we know it. we make it easy, especially in the African way. We make it easy for people to mourn their beloved because we are there to support them. We encourage them. We talk with them. We give them a place where they can, you know, and a shoulder to cry on. But it is so hard during this time. But all the same, by whatever means, we can maybe visit with, uh, with uh, observing the protocols. We can also make calls. We can do so many things even to comfort those that are mourning and those that are in all kinds of troubles because people are sick, people are in need, and we need. So we are comforted so that we may comfort others. And actually, when you read through that chapter, verse 1 to 7, 10 times the word comfort is repeated. And when you see something repeated in the Bible, it is for emphasis. So it is comfort, comforted. Comfort, comforted, 10 times between verse 1 to 7. So God is saying he is ready to comfort us. And not only comfort us, but so that we may comfort others. Number two, why are we comforted? In verse 4 it says, we are comforted because the testing of our faith produces endurance, so that we may patiently endure. So we are comforted so that we may endure. And we know what endurance does. The book of James chapter 1 verse 2 says, Count it joy, brethren, when you go through suffering, because the testing of your faith produces endurance. And endurance must finish its work, its work so that you may be mature and complete. So for us as Christians, to be mature and complete, we must patiently endure. So it is with patience that we are enduring. Because this thing will be over. You know, it is dragging. Yes, we thought it was one month, two months. We have been having cessation of movement. Uh, from one town to another, especially in our country. And we have been hoping this will be, you know, be lifted. The curfew will be lifted and we go back to our normal life. And it's not happening, but it is dragging on. And that's why the Bible says, patiently endure. So let us patiently endure. Because so that we are comforted so that we can be able to patiently endure. Because, you know, if you are in pain and there is no comfort, you cannot endure patiently. You will endure but pain free. But when you are comforted, you patiently endure the situation, whatever situation we are going through. Number three, it says, why are we, uh, number three, why we are comforted? So that we may share the experience together with the others. You know, it is a different situation when people tell you of a story of what, they, what has happened to them. But it's also another experience when you share in their experience. This time, God ensured, I would say God, ensured that all of us here in this, we know what happens, especially in our country, our leaders, our political leaders especially. When they get sick, they run away. This time, they didn't have a place to go because there were no rights, there are no hospitals accepting them, 
abroad and where elsewhere so we have all to share in this experience and so in this we are able to comfort each other because all of us are sharing the same it is not the rich and the poor it is affecting everyone across the board so we can all share in this experience and paul goes ahead even to share of an experience that he had he says in verse 8 we don't want you brethren to be ignorant about the hardship we suffered in the province of asia we were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, our hearts, in our hearts, we felt the sentence of death. Paul is explaining very well. He says, brethren, I'm not only comforting you, but I have gone through it myself, that I underwent very great pressure, far beyond my ability. And they were together with other brothers, he was not alone, so that we despaired even of life. There are people that have despaired of life. Some are even contemplating suicide. We pray that God may comfort you, that you not go ahead and commit suicide. There is a God of all comfort. So Paul is saying, we despaired even of life. Indeed, our hearts, in our hearts, we felt the sentence of death. Sometimes you could feel that. But he goes forward to say, but this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. Praise the Lord. So Paul is saying, I am, sharing, I am sharing this because I was comforted. And I was comforted when we went through hardship in the province of Asia. And you can read about the hardship that they went through in the, uh, in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, from verse 24 to 31. Paul lists down some of the things. He was shipwrecked. He was beaten. You know, he says he was hungry. He was danger at sea. He was in danger on the road. So Paul had went so many troubles. And so he said, I am sharing in this. And I'm encouraging you because I have gone through it and I have received comfort from God. So I can also encourage. And why is this? He says it very well. So that we do not rely on ourselves, but we may. In, uh, he says, we do not rely on ourselves, but on God. Verse, uh, verse 9b. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. For a very long time, the world has depended on science. We have relied on ourselves, that we can cure anything, we can treat ourselves, we can do all those kind of things. So somehow, this time we cannot rely on even that science. Our scientists, yes, we are looking forward for them to get in a vaccine for the virus and getting maybe, uh, getting even, not a, not a vaccine, even drugs to treat medicine that can treat. But at this time, now we know there is a limit to science. There is a limit to what man can do. There is only God who can do so much. We have gone to the moon and to the other places, and we think by that we, we can throw away God. Actually, in some places, people have thrown away God, and they have just relied on themselves. But Paul, as just as Paul is saying, these things happened to them. And maybe this thing is happening to us, so that we do not rely on ourselves, but to rely on God, who raises the dead. He has even the power to raise the dead. And we know of accounts in the Bible of where he raised the dead. So he is able. So my brothers, my sisters, my friends, we should not rely on ourselves. So let us go there knowing that God is able. He is able to comfort us in all our troubles. He is also able to comfort us so that we comfort others, so that we may patiently endure, and so that we do not rely on ourselves. So God bless you. Thank you for listening. I just want to share a word, to pray, to share together in a word of prayer, even as we close, just for God to comfort us and so that we may comfort others. And so that those that have despaired even of life like Paul, that they may gain life again, that you can live again because God cares for you. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this evening. Thank you for your word that has come to us, that you are the God of all comfort and the God, the Father of compassion. This night, dear Lord, there are many of us that need to be comforted, just like you comforted me. And you comforted our brother Paul, even when he says they were despaired even of life and they felt the sentence of death. There are people that are feeling like that tonight. But we thank you, Lord, even for your Holy Spirit, whom is also called the Comforter. We pray that he may visit each one of us in our various places, wherever you are. You are omnipresent. You are not limited by distance. So wherever any of my listeners is, Lord, you are able to reach out to them and in their situation. 
and comfort them and console with them and encourage them and give them the bravery even to endure patiently through the situation that we are going through and even in whatever other situation because we know there are people that are sick of other diseases lord and many other troubles that we face through this world father we pray for your comfort upon your people we thank you for your assurance we bless you and we thank you in jesus name we pray amen amen Thank you.